All right, hey guys, what's going on? So today we are going to be talking about the lead derivative of a tensor. So in the last video, we introduced the lead derivative. We also introduced the idea of torsion. And now we're going to go from taking the lead derivative of what we did. We looked at the lead derivative of a vector, which was, again, u in the direction of v minus v in the direction of u. That was the lead derivative of v, right? So we're generating... <clears throat> In that last video, we were generating uh, coordinate systems from V. We're going to do the same thing with tensors now. And then this is going to be a good uh, flow through into the next tensor, which is going to be the Riemann curvature tensor. So with that being said, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. And now let's get into the content. Okay, so today we are talking about the lead derivative of a tensor. So if you recall just a few things up until this point, we've developed sort of this hierarchical picture of our manifold. This hierarchical picture looked like this, where we, at every point in space time, we could, we had vectors in a tangent space and covectors in a cotangent space. And then we have these metrics. These metrics help us go from a uh, vector to covector. And then the color coding here, again, we said we had, uh, this was our external uh, definition of our uh, connection coefficient. Then we could use our metrics as the internal uh, definition of our connection coefficient. This thing is metric compatible. In other words, that's it. another way of saying, of understanding metric compatibility is understanding that the uh, inner product doesn't change as we go from uh, from one point P, say, to another point Q on the manifold. So that's what metric compatibility means. Also, a torsion, we're implying torsion-free also. So this is a metric-compatible torsion-free affine connection, or uh, Lie connection. Um, uh, Levi-Civita actually says so that's what that this thing was called the Levi-Civita connection. If it's metric compatible and um, <clears throat> and torsion free, and then from there we defined a covariant derivative. This is a covariant derivative of v in the direction mu, right? And so what I actually want to do is let's call this v and u. Um, because then we have V and U here and here, and actually this curvature, we're going to talk about this curvature later, but we actually need to input three things here. So say V is the vector we're transporting in the direction of U and then in the direction of, say, Z. We just need to put input three. We're going to talk about the curvature later, though. Okay. And so, so what we want to talk about is we're still sort of in this world of understanding torsion. And again, these are vectors. We're still in this world of understanding torsion, but this time we're going to take the lead derivative now of a tensor. And the, the picture of torsion sort of breaks down here because the torsion of a tensor is something that's not really quite covered a lot. Uh, and this is a little bit less intuitive to think about. It's more, uh, but I'll give somewhat of an intuitive understanding in a bit here. What So what's the derivative of a lead tensor? This is a question we're asking. So we can recall that this was how a lead ten, uh, tensor transforms, right? So this is our new tensor. This is our old tensor. These are the transformation. This is the transformation rule where these are the Jacobians, okay? And then our coordinate transformation is uh, this, right? So this is in the direction of u. u is a vector, right? So it can be parameterized and it has uh, components to it. And so we have this right here. So we get from here to here uh, by div essentially dividing everything by dxk, okay? So this is um, so that we can, from here to here then, we say that this is equal to this, okay? Uh, this goes to 1 if i and k are 1, or i and k are equal, 
and zero if they're not. Okay. And then we get this here. This is the derivative of u with respect to k. So we have this guy here. So this is, we want to put this in our bank as I'll call that equation one. The other coordinate transformation, right? So we have, we did this coordinate transformation, oops, this one. Now let's do this coordinate transformation. So when we transform that, so here's our uh, KL, this is our new coordinate system. And we are transporting in the direction U again. Notice that um, this is a U, right? This is U in the direction V minus V in the direction of U. This was our Lie derivative of V in the direction of U like that. This is that U. This U right here is going to be this U right here, but we're just going to do this for a tensor. So instead of a vector being put here, we're going to put right, a tensor, right? So tensor, oop, a tensor. And this is why this makes a little bit less sense because U in the direction of some tensor, well, a tensor doesn't really have direction to it, but it has components that each have a direction to it. And that's what we're aiming towards here. <clears throat> so we get we can subtract things from both sides, right, to get this. To write, uh, do the same thing we did last time, just divide everything by dx prime j. So we have prime and prime now. So now the prime and prime, this is us all going to go down to a Kronecker delta. This guy here, well, we can expand this, right? Uh, multiplying by um, multiplying and dividing by dxk, right? So right, so we could see those could cancel out, and we get this original original guy back. Okay, I'll undo those because now what we see is this is right. Uh, right so this here is going to be this. Right, and the way we're doing that again is, well, dxl dxj. This is just a k now instead of an l. All right, so we can replace that with this, and then we get um, from here. We this is uh, this guy right here. This is Kronecker delta. We have Kronecker delta, and then this right here is just this. And then this right here is just this, right? Just shorthand notation. Okay, and then we're gonna have this guy, when this gets multiplied to here and then to here, well, this is gonna, this thing is gonna be really small. This product between this and this can be really small. So this is just gonna be on the order of real, some really small um, uh, distance. So we're gonna ignore that. And what we get is this, right? Because we get k and j, and here's that k and j, and then here's the derivative, here's uh, the vector, and here's the parameter. Okay. All right. So to sum up, we have this guy right here. We're just get, getting rid of this. We're saying this is approximately equal to this. Okay. All right, so that is, we're going to put that in bank, in our bank. We're going to take those two guys. Now, this is this right here is 1. This right here is equation 2. And we get all of this. All right, so all of this right here. We really, we're just multiplying everything out. And then we have some extra terms in higher degree. And then here, I'll just zoom in here just in case my head's in the way. Uh, but so that's that extra term, okay? Okay, and so we get the this, we're ignoring higher order terms, and we get this, it's approximately equal to this. Okay, so if we transport our tensor from P to Q, which is what we're doing using U, K, uh, well, we can also write it as this, right? So when so in this case we did 
we defined the transformation rules, but now how does the tensor actually change? The tensor itself changes when we transport it from x to x plus dx, which is, this is point q. All right. And so when we foil things out, right, we get t at x, right? So that was that's going to be here, and then we have this right here. Okay, so we get from here to here. Uh, just as this is just the vector. Uh, these are the components, and this is that that uh, the deri the um, derivative with respect to k. Okay. All right. So now we want to find the lead derivative of a tensor. So the way we do that is we're taking the difference between the new and the old. All right. So here's the new and the old, taking that difference and dividing by um, by the um, the distance. Right. So this is that that d d lambda. Okay. So we can put, plug everything in now. So we had this, which was this guy up here. This, which is uh, this right here. Okay. So we have, we're, we're essentially doing this minus um, Let's see. Yeah, so we have, okay, so we, this here again was right here. And then this term here is right here. So we want to subtract the two. Okay. And then we get this right here, right? So things are going to cancel. So these guys are going to cancel. And then these guys are going to cancel. And we get this term right here. So the derivative, so, so there's a pattern here, right? So the derivative sums over the co co contravariant components. And the direction vector sums over the covariant components. Um, and so the covariant components with, but it sums over the covariant components with an opposite sign, right? So we have... T I L, so L and L, these two guys are summing over each other, and then these two guys are summing over each other. We notice that uh, the this pattern here. So if these two guys are summing over each other, then we get a, a negative. If these two, then we get a positive. So we can generalize this. The general form of the Lie derivative for any rank tensor, right? So for any rank tensor, it's going to be this, right? So again, if these two guys are summing over each other, we get negative, and if these two guys are summing over, we get the, a positive sign. Okay. So to recap, let's look at the covariant derivative of a tensor. So we did this before. I'm just generalizing now we sort of have a same pattern going on, right? So with the Christoffel symbols, if the lower, if these two guys are summing over each other, we get a positive. This is just a little bit of an, of, this is a little bit different, right? Because here the co, the contravariant part at, with the derivative is a negative. Here the contravariant part with our connection is positive. But then we get, right, and so the covariant part with the connection is negative. Okay. But so, so that's sort of how these things are somewhat similar to each other. So the Lie derivative and the covariant derivative. The covariant derivative again told us something about deviation from parallelism. And the Lie derivative tells us something about the deviation from sort of the closeness, how a path is closed. And these are both tensors, okay? So um, this here is a tensor, as we've seen before. This here is also a tensor, because again, if if all of these guys all have to be tensors, right? 
that these because they're just covariant derivatives and we've seen before that the covariant derivative is a tensor so if this is made up of a bunch of tensors well then this itself has to be a tensor all right okay and then last but not least we have this picture again just cleaning everything up we have that direction u we could take a covariant derivative in that direction or we could take the lead derivative in that direction these derivatives input a tensor plus a direction and compute changes we're going to talk about another type of derivative called the exterior derivative uh, but for now we have all the tools necessary for starting to study the Riemann curvature tensor so this is uh, the last video before we start getting into curvature the Riemann stuff and um, this is going to be uh, the, the Riemann curvature tensor is really the tensor that everyone gets towards. It's sort of the last stage. Understanding the Riemann curvature tensor and the Ricci scalar and the Ricci tensor, the sort of the last stages in understanding um, the essence of uh, tensor calculus and the essence of general relativity also. Uh, but there's more beyond that, right? So we're actually going to cover... Uh, we're actually going to cover G um, actually here we're actually going to cover more than just that we're uh, we're going to cover so we're going to cover Riemann Riemann we're going to cover Ricci right so these are scalars or these are tensors we're going to cover the Einstein tensor and also uh, there's more many other tensors we're going to cover the Weyl tensor we're also going to cover, um, uh, there's a bunch of other different types of vectors, but since this is a, uh, since this is a video on tensor calculus, I'm trying to keep this within the bounds of calculus and not general relativity, not really trying to invoke a lot of physics here because that's going to be for a separate playlist. Um, and so because this is a tensor calculus, uh, uh, playlist, I want to try to get more into the math right so there's other tensors out there once we finish talking about the vial tensor we are going to talk about uh, the Lenskos uh, tensor there is also I might be spelling these wrong the shout I think it's called the Shouten tensor and then there's a few others that I want to talk about, but these are all going to be tensors that tell us something about how volumes change um, and how forces change uh, within the realm of geodesic deviation. And that's also going to, so we're actually going to have to cover, bef before we get to this point, we're going to have to cover uh, geodesic deviation. Uh, we're going to have to cover um, or the variational approach to tensor calculus. As well. So so, so, so there's going to be a break between talking about these tensors and talking about some more advanced stuff. This, but these are specifically within the realm of, uh, of differential geometry. Uh, but this is, again, I'm, st I'm sticking straight, strictly to a math, uh, uh, mathematics here within this playlist. And in the separate playlist, we're going to talk about GR. But with that being said, I hope you guys enjoy this type of content. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. And I will see you guys in the next video.